Selection boxes finished. <clears throat> yeah, they've all gone. Have they? Have you not yeah. got, have you not no. got a, a bounty left? <laughs> no, no, nothing. No, it's all gone. <laughs> all your chocolate gone, Susie? <clears throat> um, yes. Well, I think we've still got some plain chocolate somewhere, which is like 95% cocoa, which nobody really wants to uh, try. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> after that, it's all gone. Uh, confessions to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Um, we, and, and the best gets a smart speaker, so if you fancy a smart speaker, uh, send us a top tail. Today's comes from Mike and Carol, and it is called All the Cops Are in the Donut Shop. Father Simon, Sister Susie, Brother Matt, we offer you this confession, anonymity is not required. Although, that, to be honest, that makes me nervous. Okay. <clears throat> we are Mike and Carol, a teaching couple, who in the ten years from 2003 to 2013 were teaching at an international school in Cairo, in Egypt. Ooh. Hmm. Walk like an Egyptian, you yes. see. Oh, I see. Yes. Right, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> to set the scene, Carol was at the time the class teacher of one of six classes in year three. It's 25 seven to eight year olds per class, mostly all Egyptian, obviously. Mike was the primary IT teacher who taught all of the children in the primary department at some time or another. At the start of each, each new humanities block of learning, previously known as history and geography, it was deemed necessary by the powers at be that the teaching staff should create what was called a wow entry point. That was actually what it was called, a wow entry point. What? Make it exciting, basically. Okay. The new year three topic was to be ancient Egypt, which was very convenient, as all the resources required were easily available. What we needed to construct was a wow entry point. <laughs> in the introductory assembly, many Egyptian artifacts were displayed in a newly created raised area at one end of the central space between the classrooms. This was known as the year three pod. Being in Egypt, we had an incredible range of objects from posters, photographs, stone scarab beetles, model pyramids, metal hooks for removing the brain through the nose dur during the mummification oh, process, okay. 1.5 meter high statues of the gods Anubis, think the evil dog-headed creature, and Horus, the falcon-headed one. And at the back of the display, a life-size mummy laid out on our interpretation of a sarcophagus. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said metal, <laughs> metal hook for removing the brain before. At precisely 8.30 a.m., the children quietly-ish filed into the assembly area and tried hard to contain their excitement at seeing the wonders on display. Our year leader, Kiara, regaled the rapt audience with her weekend adventures to the Khan al Khalili Massive Bazaar in downtown Cairo. I think I've got that right. Yeah, okay. The Khan al Khalili Massive Bazaar in Cairo, where almost anything legal and illegal can be purchased for the right price. She <laughs> animatedly described, as only a primary school teacher can, how she had bargained with various vendors for the collection of genuine ancient Egypt objects which were on display. Five minutes into her presentation, a small group of children became unsettled and somewhat distracted. They were pointing, hmm, frowning. This caused nearby teachers to try and instill a sense of quiet and calm in their charges. All seemed to settle down as Kiara continued her tale. However, only a minute or so later, a larger number of children began to whisper and point in the direction of the assembled artifacts. Again, the teachers intervened and did their best to restore order. Nearing the end of Kiara's account, she had arrived at the part where, having bartered long and hard, she was about to complete the negotiations for the most expensive purchase, the mummy. She explained that the seller had seemed particularly eager to get rid of it, even agreeing to a substantial discount. The deal was done. Kiara proudly added that she had managed to get free delivery of the mummy <laughs> <laughs> as, it, as it wouldn't fit in the taxi. Oh. Important. Right, yeah. Come on, just push a bit. Put it in the boot. <laughs> it was at this point, Father Simon, that pandemonium erupted. As I have to report, the mummy jerkily rose to a seated position, eased <laughs> its bandaged legs over the edge of the sarcophagus, <laughs> dragged itself up to its full God. height and slowly lumbered through the remaining children and teachers trailing loose bandages in its wake. Many groups of children jumped up and ran screaming into their classrooms and hid for hours. Some remained rooted to the spot with open mouths and wide eyes. 
we should explain that before chaos ensued, during Kiara's introduction, the mummy had first of all slightly moved a couple of fingers, causing the more observant children to react. Then it had raised its hand, hi, <laughs> leading to the greater commotion. The rest, as they say, is history, ancient yeah. Egyptian history. Mm -hmm. Now that we have left Egypt, we feel able to seek forgiveness from the parents and the year three children who are probably now in their early 20s <laughs> for the trauma inflicted by Mike, who was, of course, the mummy in question, <laughs> and the rest of the year three staff who had spent a frantic half hour prior to the assembly wrapping him in strips of bed sheets. <laughs> I don't That's... think this would ever get commissioned no, now. No. Really. <laughs> More specifically, we feel that forgiveness is needed from Farida, who was so distraught that she had to have a secret meeting with her mum and the mummy to convince her that it really was a staged, fun performance mm. to provide the children with a memorable entry point, a wow entry point, of course, to their new topic. Uh, yours, uh, seeking forgiveness with a large grin on our faces in memory of this episode in our now concluded teaching careers. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> Carolyn Mike, once of Egypt, sending in an, our first Egyptian confession. Sister wow. Susie, voice of authority from the pub. Uh, do you know what, Mike and Carol? I was going to, I really was going to forgive you. I was with you all the way through and I just thought it was absolutely great. However, the fact that that one child was so traumatised, yes. I just don't think I can forgive you and I think that it's a no from me. It's a no from Sister Susie, a brother from another gutter. So this wow entry point, I had no idea about this. Goodness me, how much pressure are they on? I mean, what are they going to? How are they going to up that? I mean, mind boggles. You get to the, you know, Tudors and Stuarts. What are you going to do there? Um, I'm going to forgive just because, you know, they were, they were they were making history come alive, weren't they, for the kids? Is that right? And fair enough, they need to be talked down, and one of them clearly more affected than the others. But uh, yeah, I'm going to forgive. People's verdict is what we need, please. Six one zero five four. First word is Simon. Do you forgive our Egyptian teachers? Six one zero five four. It's the people's verdict. And it's incoming in the next hour. Uh, tonight comes during the mummification process. Lovely. Sarcophagus is uh, a life-size mummy which came to life. And wow, entry points in teaching. Well, it was a shocking tale and some of the kids were truly terrified by what they saw. But it's okay because Carol and Mike are now out of Egypt. <laughs> Right. So, so they can send in the confession. Uh, anyway, the people's verdict is in. This is what it sounds like. So Jerry says, utterly forgiven. I'm with Brother Matt on this one. They were only bringing history to life. Shame he didn't do the sand dance. But Lucy says, I'm with Susie. Not forgiven. Desperately wanted to, but that childhood trauma sticks with you forever. Yes. Speaking from experience after a terrifying trip to London dungeons, she <laughs> says. And uh, Ruthie in Hampshire says, forgiven. Hard-working museum educator here with my own Egyptian trauma story. I am added the sound of brain being pulled from the nose, in reality, the sound of plodging in mud, to a museum workshop. A parent wrote a letter of complaint. It contained both the line, my daughter was traumatised, and the line, it was the best museum visit she's ever had. So we didn't take it too seriously. Oh. We educators working hard to bring the past to life for youngsters. Forgiven. Gold stars and house points all round. Very good. Carol and Mike, thank you very much for, uh, for your confession. It also featured, by the way, which I think, because we just edited it down for length, uh, uh, in their display, canopic jars, which are apparently jars, and the kids really loved them, they contained the inner organs. Oh, lovely. So while you were doing the mummification mm. process, they went in the canopic in the, in, jar. In the jars. This yeah. is an education thing. So, now look, if you have uh, a fine confession and you think it's good enough to win the smart speaker, we would love to hear from you. Uh, maybe you get on this week, maybe on next week, you just send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Anyway, it's confession time, and if it may well be that you have a tale just sort of lurking away, and you think, I'm not quite sure whether to send it in. Well, imagine one of our lovely smart speakers if you send in a fine one. That's what you have to do. Send it to confessions at greatestitsradio.co.uk. Uh, people's verdict will be expected once you've heard tonight's tale, which comes from Martin. Uh, and I'm just checking that we've got Brother Matthew. Yes, uh, I'm here. Uh, next door through the class. Uh, mm -hmm. Sister Susie's not in the pub. She's in Studio B25. <laughs> yes. I think. Okay. Wow. Wherever that is. Simon and Susie and the brother from another gutter, says Martin. I seek forgiveness for an event that happened in the mid-90s. You see, my partner and I decided to go for an impromptu curry at one of Bradford's finest curry restaurants. Mm. Bradford, of course, is synonymous for its curry houses. However, we chose to go to the finest 
Curry House in Bradford. Indeed, may I be so bold as to say the finest in the country. All right, wow. here we go. Go oh, on. Okay. You're going to feel very hungry very, very shortly. Uh, such was the excellence in their food they once cooked for Princess Diana. That's how far mm -hmm. up the pole they are. Wow. The restaurant, as you can imagine, was divine. In its high standard of cuisine and presentation of its decor, its tables and its staff, the tables had magnificent white tablecloths, wine glasses and cutlery. All the waiters wore white shirts and black trousers and nothing was too much trouble from the moment you walked in, unlike some of the less savoury establishments yeah. that I could mention. <laughs> but wow. fortunately, I'm not. <laughs> and even if I had, you'd have taken it out. Yes, 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 yes. When you walked into this restaurant, there was a reception area where you could peruse the menu whilst imbibing a nice cold Kingfisher beer or two. And um, we kind of, my partner and I, we leisurely discussed the menu. Plain rice or palau rice, always a tricky one. Prawn buna or vegetable biryani, lamb madras or chicken to piazza. It's tricky. We were sat facing the entrance as we discussed this, and this was the time that another couple entered the restaurant, and quite clearly the guy recognized me. Being polite, I acknowledged his presence, but for the life of me, couldn't remember who he was. This put me a little bit on the back foot because I couldn't recall him. Him, nod and smile. Me, ah, nod, smile, no idea. Oh, right. No. We've all been in these situations. This set my mind racing as to who he was. Well, they decided, this couple, to go straight to their table. We followed soon after. We were shown to our table. We were seated directly behind them, such that I would see the back of the guy's head as I looked over my partner's shoulder. Who is this guy? I kept asking myself, driving myself crazy. We had a lovely meal anyway. A few more kingfishers. <laughs> there yeah. are other beers, but, you know, yeah. the kingfishers are working nice. quite well. And all the while, I was tormenting myself for the guy's name. Well, it, it quite quickly came to a head. In fact, everything seemed to happen at once. After our meal, my partner decided to powder her nose. And at the same instant, his partner decided to powder her nose. The smartly dressed waiters brought our blindingly hot towels, blast furnace hot, to wipe our hands and faces. It suddenly dawned on me I did know who it was. It was Nigel, and I hadn't seen Nigel for years. I used to go to school with him. Ah. What better way to let on than to creep up behind him oh, no. and rub the fiercely hot <laughs> towel no, no. in his face? <laughs> Nigel! I exclaimed as I rubbed the towel in his face. You can imagine the shock and awe as the skin was peeling from his face. The unintellig unintelligible guffaws added to my glee. The harder I rubbed, the more shocked he was. Nigel, how are you? I held the, fannel, the flannel oh, firm. No. Nigel writhed under my firm hand. I carried on pressing the soft cloth to his face. Must be 20 years! <laughs> Carrying on. You haven't, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> From under the towel, about now, I just heard him cry. I'm not Nigel! Obviously. Yeah. Oh, I thought. <laughs> Who the hell is Nigel? <laughs> My name is Tony. Uh. <laughs> Apparently it transpired he'd once run a pub. And that's how he recognised me, because I used to go into his pub every now and then <laughs> right. to buy Kingfisher. <laughs> It also came to light that he had just been released from hospital following a heart attack. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, not a line that usually <laughs> induces mirth, but anyway, it does in these circumstances. I could have brought on another coronary. I never saw Tony after that, so maybe it did. And I never saw Nigel, come to think of it. I trust they both had long and fruitful lives. But I do realise that I need to seek forgiveness uh, for my misgivings because clearly I made a horrendous faux pas and I would like to ask forgiveness. From Martin, formerly of Bradford, but now moved away. <laughs> so uh, let's check in then. 
shocking story. Yeah. Sister Susie from well, Studio B93. <laughs> yeah, I've moved. Um, I have to say, Martin, excellent use of the word imbibe. That uh, You get a tick in my book from okay. that. Um, and you know what? It happens all the time in the pub. You get people come in, they remember you because there's only one of you, and you see hundreds of people in the pub. And they'll you'll recognise them, and, and you'll be like, I know, I don't know their name. So I do feel for you, Martin. However, that was a bit mean. It was really, really mean. And well, you, was it? He didn't have to go that far. You could have just shouted over, waved and said, hello, Nigel. And he would have said, no, it's not Nigel. And that would been fine. But no, you had, to, you had to rub the towel in his face and cause a scene. So for that reason, I can't forgive you. Nigel writhed under my firm hand. Exactly. Mm. Right. <laughs> well. Not uh, forgiven. Rather from another guy. Don't know who's right. <laughs> Better spell another avenue there. Uh, I happen to know the curry houses of Bradford rather well, um, and but I've never heard of this one. Uh, certainly, well, I didn't them. name it. Well, obviously not. But you know, <laughs> I've never been to one where they had white linen uh, tablecloths and all of that. The the cashmere. I remember going there. They're very good. Anyway, um, I'm going to say forgiven here because I mean, you know, no harm done. I mean, apart from the heart attack, obviously. Um, but you know, everything else was fine. He was fine, and and he got two goes in the towel and the towel's the best bit isn't it so oh, you know uh, all forgiven i love those towels you have to tear off the little <laughs> yeah oh lovely nice. uh okay it's the people's verdict do you forgive martin yes or no on the text 61054 merely moments ago tuesday's confession uh, which came from Martin, who went for a curry. Uh, and in the curry house, he finally recognised a long-lost school friend, thought he'd creep up on him by... Uh, and then once he'd done that, get his really, really flaming hot towel, which he'd just been handed, and put it in his new mate's... his old friend's face. But he got the wrong person. It wasn't Nigel. It was Tony. Of course it was. Uh, anyway, hopefully, all everyone is perfectly fine as a result of all of that. Anyway, the people's verdict comes in like this. Oh, hang on. There it is. Put go my ahead. mic up. There you go. There yes. You <laughs> so, Emma says, today's confession is an absolute belter. Going to take some beating this, not just for the whole, the whist week, but for the whole year. Forgiven oh. for making me cry with laughter. Um, Ray says, forgiven. I had the first octave of laughter when Martin got up with the towel. Then I was completely gone when you mentioned the heart attack. Honest case of mistaken identity in my book, especially with loads of King's fascia. Uh, easily done. Forgiven, says Chris Ball. Great story. I'm with Matt as a big fan of the cashmere. Uh, Chris was there in the late 70s. And finally, John oh, says... That, but it wasn't that... It wasn't the it cashmere. It wasn't the was cashmere. No, no, no. It was a different one. Uh, and John finally says, not forgiven. He had a dodgy ticker and he could have slipped into a coma. Yeah. Right. <laughs> ticker um, and coma. Yes, that Both really wasn't curries. worth keeping to the end. It was was worth think? keeping. It was superb. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for those comments. If you have a confession for us on tomorrow's programme, well, it's confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That's going to be a hot contender for the smart speaker. Very hot and spicy. A hot contender. Uh, standing by for our confession, so gather around. Sister Susie, she's in the saloon bar down the uh -huh. pub, I think. Is that where you are? I am. Above okay. it, but yeah. Oh, just above it. Okay, all right. Uh, Brother Matthew is in Studio B5, through the glass. Mm -hmm. Very COVID secure. <laughs> That's the way it has to be for the moment. But things might be changing. Who knows? If you have a confession, uh, it's got to be a good one. And then you can get the smart speaker. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Today's comes from Rona. Can I say, before we start, there is a 12 certificate on this. Oh. Particularly good. if you're eating food. Ah, uh, even better. Did you say that's fair, Susie? I think that's... Yeah, 100%. I'm thinking of a 15. Really? Wow, how has this got through? For food eaters, anyway. <laughs> Which is, I guess, everybody, but, you know, not particularly <laughs> at the moment. Father Simon, brother from the other gutter, Sister Susie of Mercy and the General Confessional Collective, says Rona, I have led a good and conscientious life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is, however, a recent event for which I do believe I need to seek your charity, your understanding and most of all, your forgiveness. It's been a very hard couple of years for everyone, well, most people, with restrictions on social gathering and activities, but I have had the good fortune of living in North Wales. Uh, since moving back here a few years ago with my boyfriend in order to work for the NHS. It is where I now call home and the hills in our backyard are our playground and also for our dogs. You must understand though, Father Simon, that we always practice the country code of never leaving anything behind and the only things that we take away with us are photos and memories. Now, you should know that before lockdown, we acquired a new dog, a golden-coloured, long-haired mini bear it's a kind of mongrel kind of dog 
which we somewhat appropriately called Pooh Bear. This was a great idea at the time, and at home we of course just shortened it to poo, but in practice we have found, sometimes to our embarrassment, you can't really go around <laughs> Theo Shane. <laughs> no. at the top of your voice in public no. and you definitely get some very disapproving looks mm. at the same uh, sorry at the time of the first lockdown in Wales we were lucky enough to be able to walk directly from our garden into the hills without meeting anyone and could therefore continue to enjoy the wilderness blessed with an even more acute tranquility given that the general UK public were not otherwise allowed to be present nevertheless we did miss our friends and so what joy therefore when the residents of Wales were again allowed to spend time with each other outdoors when the rest of the UK was still in lockdown to celebrate we decided to go socially distanced camping with some friends of ours who lived in the local town. However, whilst enjoying our freedom, so did Pooh. He decided to roam far and wide, and it wasn't long before he disappeared. And the cry went up, Where's Pooh? <laughs> said my boyfriend. Pooh! We shouted. <laughs> yeah. Where are you, Pooh? <laughs> this went on for a while. Then, as if perfectly scripted, he came bounding back, Moments later with his special, look at me, I'm handsome swagger. The same kind of walk that John Wayne would muster up after a few shots in the bar when he was either looking to impress one of the ladies or stare down one of his male rivals. Maybe I'm getting carried away yes, with I this think, particular yeah. line of thinking. <laughs> anyway, running around, Pooh Bear was clearly very, very proud of himself. Strutting like a peacock on heat. <laughs> okay. However... <laughs> His hair seemed to be greased back with something, like a neatly coiffured John Travolta. <laughs> He'd clearly been rolling in something, and it didn't take long to work out what. Oh, poo. Oh, dear. And then, <laughs> and then, and then followed a very, very long session of having to A, catch the dog, and then B, wash him off in the river, while swearing at how long hair really doesn't lend itself to easy cleaning no. without shampoo. <laughs> No matter how much we wash the dog, Pooh Bear still stank of... Well, you get the picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cutting our losses, we decided to break camp and made our way back home again to give the dog a good bath. However, our journey home required a good hike back across areas which until recently had been empty. But on this day were teeming with several hundreds of tourists from England, all of whom had decided to break their own lockdown rules by coming to Wales. As people walked up the hillside, happy to be out once more and gleefully sticking two fingers up at their own lockdown, I mean, imagine that happening. Imagine. They enthusiastically, but there weren't any drinks trolleys anywhere, <laughs> no, they no. enthusiastically no. greeted Pooh Bear with a hearty oh, no. pat and rub down, oh, tickling behind the ears, <laughs> stroke his tummy as he bounded up to them. Completely oblivious to the fact that Pooh really should have been the epitome of social distancing. <laughs> so now here's the thing. I might have to skip over some of this. Yeah. Uh, Father Simon, right, exactly. Father Simon, the collective forgiveness. It is at this point I feel I must ask for your tolerance. There will no doubt have been quite a number of hikers who accused others in their group of acquiring a new, albeit unwelcome, smell mm. as they wandered up the hill. However, I feel no remorse for this as they were breaking lockdown anyway. <laughs> Instead, I feel I need to seek forgiveness for my own actions or perhaps lack of them. <clears throat> In my eagerness and excitement to get out camping and enjoy the stunning wilderness when the Welsh lockdown lifted, I should have taken a moment or two and briefed our friends who we were camping with prior to letting them loose on the beautiful countryside. Our friend, I have to report looked very mortified by proceedings. We believe he might have been involved. <laughs> In fact, he might even have been responsible. Uh, oh. Oh, dear. And it is therefore for this reason <laughs> that I seek forgiveness for not potty training our friends as I should have done, as I now do with all the guests, and which led to this unfortunate incident. I hope you'll be understand that the excitement and, I don't know how this got through the excitement and eagerness for the fresh air and campfire camaraderie led me to rush into this slightly unprepared <laughs> but from which I've learned a valuable life lesson and that is to never buy a long haired dog again which is clearly the moral of that story <laughs> yeah. okay the story of Rona and uh, Pooh Bear uh, the voice of responsibility and authority is Sister Susie
Well, Rona, I just think if you're going to go camping, why, why don't you go to actual campsites that have toilet facilities where you um, can use them, where your friend can use them? Um, but I just think you should have kept your dog away from other people if he if he rolled in whatever he did roll well, in. So therefore, I can't forgive whatever you. Whatever it was, it could have been. We don't know what we don't know what it was. Oh, we don't know. Have, might have been a nice lolly. It could have been that, or it could have been. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's all nature, isn't it? Circle of life. Um, great, great. Um, uh, I thought to, to finally have John Wayne and John Travolta in the same uh, confession. Yes. That hasn't happened uh, far too long for, uh, as far as I'm concerned. What, here's, here's the rule as far as dogs are concerned. You don't pat other people's dogs. That's the way it is. Well, and if you hadn't patted the dogs, then well, guess what? You wouldn't have your hands in and all covered in the there, whatever the thing. So, uh, for that reason, <laughs> I choose to forgive. So... It's because the it's, their, it's their fault. It's their own fault. Your own fault for patting the dogs. You don't pat other people. That's a, the rule of dogs is you don't pat other people's Where's dogs. Is that written down? It's written Where's down that? when you get a dog. There's a big sign is says, it? don't pat other people's dogs. It's on the dog license. It's absolutely. seven and sixpence from the <laughs> post office. What? <laughs> Uh, the people's verdict, please. Do you forgive Rona? Yes or no? 61054. First word is Simon. 61054. First word of the text is Simon. Forgiveness. Yes or no? The people's verdict on tonight's confession, which came from Rona and the story of a uh, little camping expedition with Pooh Bear the dog. Hear it. I'm not going to go over the details. <laughs> no. Rem tell us what the people are saying. So Tom says, forgiven. I'd let them out of the doghouse for that one. Uh, Grant in Bromyard says, not forgiven. Any responsible dog owner should know that the offending substance is easily washed off with tomato ketchup and a good hose down. Really? Uh, yeah, well, apparently, yeah. Alex in Cambridgeshire says, forgiven. As it sounds like Pooh got to the tourists before they could say anything. And if they confessed afterwards, it just would have made things worse. Also, with regards to the rule of dogs, I'm sure I saw them live at Reading. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah there um, you get it. Yes. Yeah, I mean... Mm. Yes, no, it definitely works. Okay, yeah. uh, if you say so. So now, listen here. Thank you very much, Steve, for that. And if you think that you have a, a story and you fancy getting your hands on one of our love, very lovely smart speakers, write out your confession, send it in. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk Well, this is Drive Time coming to you. Uh, from the good people, that's us, Greatest Hits Radio, and uh, I'm in Studio B5, Matt's uh, next door through the glass, Studio B4. Yes. Uh, Sister Susie has gone to, I think she's in B39, <laughs> is that right? Studio B39. Yes, B39. Uh, all fitting uh, appropriate rules and regulations. Uh, final confession of the week, maybe this will be the Smart Speaker winner. Send yours to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. This one comes from Charlie. Charlie thanks very much for this tale Father Simon and the Choir of Compassion Ooh. oh I'm thinking also a PG certificate also he's slightly disgusting so <laughs> uh, is it food problem or uh, yeah, well, yeah. 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 yeah oh right yeah. Okay. so maybe a 12 if you're eating yeah. right not to prejudge says Charlie but I don't see forgiveness here but oh. regardless here we go <laughs> my tale harks back to what is now regarded as different times yep however some blame lies with my dad who was raised in what can only be considered as very different times. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Or the olden days, as they were known. Whilst I sit innocently, while I sat innocently occupied by Swap Shop, or Tiz was, I would be informed of how back in the olden days, those of Ricketts, diphtheria and <laughs> licking the malt off the spoon, Ooh, he and his friends would make their own entertainment like singing songs around the piano, also making catapults out of balsa wood, also racing caterpillars and maggots on specially made race courses made of paper and matchsticks. Yeah, like you said, different times. Yeah. However, one method of home entertainment sparked my interest and set me on my way to emulate his past exploits. Every day for the following week, I visited a local retailer on the way home from school to see if he had the required items for entertainment. And daily I was disappointed, until finally, on a Friday, he passed over the counter a carrier bag of fun, a carrier bag of entertainment, a carrier bag of adventure. It's one carrier bag, but it's full of fun and <laughs> okay. adventure. I happily carried the bag home to show my mum, who was quite revolted, about my free bag of chicken's feet. Now, Aww. these are cooked and eaten in many countries, as you probably know, Father Simon, and I had a bag of them. I told you it was disgusting. Once you got hold 
of your chicken feet, you could pull the clammy white foot into a claw. This was great for chasing younger sisters around the house. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> or gripping unsuspecting people on the shoulder with. <laughs> the next day, Father Sam was a Saturday, and the day of the school summer fair. So along with a few friends, I cycled up to the school, the full intention of making as many people squirm as possible. Needless to say, we soon got bored of tapping people on the shoulder with a claw or gripping pencils with our chicken's feet. Plus, we had a big bag of them, and it was a hot day, and our fingers were getting sore, constantly dipping in to grab the tendons. We needed to get rid of chicken's feet, and so this leads me to where I now need to beg for forgiveness. <clears throat> it's not from the people who found a chicken's foot or two in the carrier bags of tat they picked up at the summer fair. After all, <laughs> when did a bit of raw chicken ever do them any harm? Right. Nor do I ask forgiveness from anyone who had a chicken's foot fall out of the toilet roll holder at school on the Monday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, okay. Father Simon, I humbly beg forgiveness from the innocent owner of what I would now call a beautiful Triumph Stag Convertible. Which probably then I would have called a beautiful yeah. Triumph Stag Convertible because that's what it's called. He and it being different times, it probably would have been a he. Would have, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, would have returned to his pride and joy to find the wheel said car, the steering wheel, being gripped at ten to two <laughs> like the tracking instructor yeah, tells yeah, you, yeah, yeah. by chicken's feet. The handbrake held <laughs> chicken's feet and the, the gear knob casually lent on by the claws of wow. this Chinese delicacy. Hopefully you found the ones under the seat and in the glove oh. box before they got too funky. And as for the ones <laughs> as for the ones hidden in the folds of the soft top well, oh, convertibles right. at the time were known to be difficult to get up in a rush, so he would have had plenty of time to get them out before they rained down on any unsuspecting passenger. Or maybe he didn't, and some foxy date uh, got into the car and had a surprise shower of Chinese claws oh. rain down on their fancy clothes. Mm. I await your absolution, but I think, as I mentioned at the beginning, I may well be pushing, pushing my luck. Well, let's find out. Uh, Charlie, thank you very much for uh, tonight's tale, which was, as you might remember, called Stick a de Deck Chair Up Your Nose. Yes. This is a reference well to the chicken song by Spinning Image. Anyway, uh, Sister Susie, voice of responsibility, what do you say? No, Charlie, I'm not even going to go into too much detail. It was disgusting and you shouldn't have done it. Not forgiven. Oh, right, okay. She's got, <laughs> she got an eye on the clock. Clearly. Oh, right, oh, really? Oh, right, well, I'll just go on for four minutes then. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, I mean, I, I do have a simple rule. If it ever involves uh, people with convertibles, you're always forgiven. Because, frankly, you've got it coming with your convertibles and your yeah. cravats and your pencil-thin moustaches <laughs> and whatever else your it is people drama in... Drama degrees. Yeah, the drama degrees. Your berets. Um, and, and let's also say, you know, the claws were at 10 to 2, so highway code compliant and on the handbrake as well. So, you know, definitely forgiven. Because it was safe and everything It was else. safe. Mm. In uh, control. People's verdict, please. Do you forgive Charlie, yes or no, for his uh, chicken feet confession? 61054. First word is Simon. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's the way it sounds so much better than chicken feet. Okay, people's verdict. Here it is. So, Gaynor from Chester says, Charlie completely forgiven. Driving home, laughing my head off in my Jaguar soft top nice. XJS. Uh, Wayne from Rutland says, definitely forgiven, but not Matt. Surely no harm, no foul rule yes. applies oh, here. Good. Yes. And finally, John Murden, chief executive of the National Motor Museum in Bewley, says, in my professional opinion, definitely not forgiven. Not for the harm to the owner of said triumph stag, but just for the sacrilege inflicted on one of the most beautiful cars ever made in this country. <laughs> uh, OK, so th uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, so, Confession of the Week, who gets the smart speaker? Uh, Monday's confession was from teachers Mike and Carol, their Egyptian confession with the life-size mummy, with the wow entry point. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. Um, uh, next up was Martin's confession about a mistaken identity, frightened another man in the curry house with the mm. uh, with his red-hot flannel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rona provided yesterday's confession about the camping expedition and Pooh Bear the dog. Mm -hmm. And you just had final confession of the week from Charlie about his adventure with a bag of chicken feet or in Spain. Bath off their boil. Uh, Susie leads the way with her casting. No, not casting. Why are you going first? Um, I am going first, and I think it has to be Martin who uh, mistakenly identified 
Nigel or not Nigel with his in the curry host okay. with his flannel. Uh, brother? I am going to go with Suze on this one. It has to be Martin on Tuesday with the <laughs> with the flannel on the uh, heart attack man. That's, that's right. He was <laughs> just out of hospital. Uh, I have three votes, of course. And of course, because you're FIFA. I also am going to go <laughs> for the curry house flannel Excellent. confession, wow. uh, which means Martin, Martin gets the smart speaker. Uh, congratulations. And if you have a tale for us for next week, we would love to hear about it. Confessions at greatest hits radio.co.uk.